The basic concept of value uh, investing, obviously, is uh, many, many decades old. But today, I think it is as relevant as uh, when it was first laid out by Benjamin Graham at Columbia six, seven decades ago. There's essentially just a three basic ideas. Uh, the first one is that stock is not a piece of a paper that you treat, but is a represented fractional ownership of a company. And therefore, valuing the stock ought to really have a basic bearings of valuing the company as a whole. And then secondly, that in valuing any financial asset that uh, you have to really predict the future, uh, the discounted cash flow of the future cash earnings. And the future is uh, inherently difficult to predict. And and therefore, you really want to leave yourself a margin of safety so that you could be wrong or you could be right. But because the future is a distribution of, of, of opportunity, I mean, of statistic possibilities, say you bet on something that at 90% of the chances you could be right, but then a 10% chance occurred. And so all of a sudden it become 100%. So you want to leave enough of margin of safety. In other words, you want to buy at a low enough of a price, even if all the adverse uh, events occur against you in the future, uh, you will still be in the game. It doesn't mean you won't lose money, but it just means that you will not lose so much that you'll be out of the game. Because investing is really a long game. It can play it over the life of anybody's career. And so you want to be really in the game somehow <laughs> over the long haul. And the third concept is Mr. Market, to figure out a frame of a mind to think that uh, when the market is against you, you can really look at it as a, uh, a, a neurotic uh, Mr. Market that's uh, prone for emotional and irrational behaviors. So those are the three basic concepts. At the heart of it is obviously it is this bargain idea that you want to really get what you pay for. Now, obviously that's what everybody wanted. And if everybody wanted the same thing, you would think that uh, all of the professional investors would be value investors. And that's just a further <laughs> the thing from the truth. In fact, value investing as is properly practiced constitute a tiny, small minority of all the investment professionals. Majority of the people hold a different views. And let me just articulate <coughs> for them the alternative views about investing. Number one, that yes, stock legally represent a fractional claim, a fractional ownership, but is first and foremost a piece of a paper you can treat all the time. And therefore, it follows that the successful investing lies in the successful guessing of the stock movement based on whatever informed theories or practices that you can find. And thirdly, that the market is to be respected, indeed to be feared, because they really, through the market, you can actually find a value. And through the market, you can actually buy and sell. So this, there you go, a different view. And it sounds even more persuasive than the first views that I laid out as a value investor. In fact, I would say majority of the people really follow the latter rather than the former. So as a young student trying to get into the business, which way do you follow? I would have suggested before you do that, you would go through some fundamental studies as to the result of various different approach and philosophies. Unfortunately, there has been numerous studies have done because we kept a pretty good track record uh, over the last 100 years at least. Since it, uh, and, and, and all the studies that have uh, given an unmistaken conclusion that the true value investors, as it pra uh, properly practiced, have consistently uh, outperformed the market. Yeah. Whereas all, just about all other strategies uh, either match the market or severely underperform the market over a long period of time. 